All right, so get ready because today we are going deep on consciousness. Ooh, sounds intense. It is. Listeners sent in a ton of research and it leads to a pretty big question. What's that? What if consciousness isn't just, you know, something our brains make, but something much, much bigger? You're talking non-local consciousness, right? Right. The idea that awareness might go beyond, like, our bodies and the limits of space and time. Yeah, exactly. And we've got this 2022 paper by Wabe and others. It's called, uh, What if Consciousness is Not an Emergent Property of the Brain? Catchy title. Right. It really challenges the classic neuroscience view, doesn't it? Like our brains are just biological computers churning out consciousness. Right. And the paper goes through some of the main theories about how that might work, like uh, starting with global workspace theory. Okay. So global workspace theory. Yeah. Imagine your brain's like a broadcasting system. Okay. And consciousness is the signal being sent to different areas. So like a radio station playing the consciousness show for our brain to tune into. That's a good analogy. But then there are these... Uh... What are they called? Higher order theories, right? Yeah. Higher order theories. Where consciousness comes from the brain, like, reflecting on itself. It, exactly. It's like uh, your brain has a mini brain inside. Whoa. Watching what the bigger brain is doing. This recursive loop of self-awareness. Wild. But wait, there's integrated information theory too, right? Oh, yeah. That one gets really abstract. Oh, so. Well, it says consciousness is like a fundamental property of any system that's complex enough. Hmm. It even suggests that computers could be conscious, theoretically. Oh, wow. And then there's the one where our brains are like prediction machines. You mean reentry and predictive processing theories? Yes. Basically, your brain's making predictions about the world all the time. Right. And updating them based on what your senses tell it. And from all that, consciousness emerges. Sounds like a lot of work. It is. And all these theories are complex, but they leave out something pretty big. What's that? The paper calls it the hard problem of consciousness. Mm. Qualia, the feeling of experience. Ah, qualia. So we can map out how we see the color red, but not what it feels like to see red. Exactly. Like you can read a recipe for chocolate cake, know every ingredient and but, step. But you haven't tasted it. Right. So maybe the problem isn't the theories themselves, but what they're based on. Okay, I'm fine. What if we need to look outside the physical brain to truly get what consciousness is. That's where non-local consciousness comes in, right? Exactly. The idea that awareness might not be limited to our bodies or even the laws of physics. And this paper goes into some seriously mind-bending theories on that. Oh, it does. Like, what's that one by Federico Fagan? Operational probabilistic theory. <laughs> Think of it like a really immersive video game. Okay. You get so absorbed, right? Fagan says reality is kind of like that. Go on. It's a huge interconnected network, and we're like players controlling characters in that network. So our consciousness is outside the game, interacting with in it. In a way, yeah. And then you have Donald Hoffman's theory, interface theory of perception. Imagine your perception's like a computer interface. Okay. It's useful, but it doesn't show you the true reality underneath. So you're seeing the desktop icons, not the complex code making it work. Exactly. And then there's Bernardo Kastrup with analytic idealism. Ready for this one? Hit me. He says there's just one universal consciousness. None. And we're all like little pockets of it experiencing ourselves separately. Wow. And even wilder matter, the physical world, is just how we perceive each other across this consciousness boundary. Okay, I need a minute to process that one. No problem. There's more. We've got Vernon Epi and Ed Close. What did they come up with? They say we live in a nine-dimensional reality with consciousness woven into space-time itself. Nine dimensions. I can barely picture four. Right. They call this extra dimension Gimel. And it su supposedly connects consciousness, life, even the structure of atoms. So even atoms have a bit of consciousness in this view. It's a very complex model, but it highlights how fundamental consciousness might be. I'm noticing a trend here. All these theories try to explain what our materialist science can't. That's a great observation. It's like the blind man and the elephant. Each theory explores a different part of this huge mystery we call consciousness. All right. They all suggest it's bigger and more fundamental than just what our brains produce. Exactly. Okay. So we've got these wild theories, but is there anything in the real world that backs them up? You know, something that says, hey, this is more than just speculation. Well, now things get really interesting. The paper talks about a few phenomena that, if proven real, would challenge everything we think we know. All right, lay it on me. What kind of phenomena are we talking about? Well, let's start with something that sounds like it's straight out of a spy movie. Remote viewing. 
Wait, are you talking about like psychic spies? You got it. People who can see things happening far away. Seriously. There was a top secret U.S. government program that ran for over 20 years looking into it. And what were they trying to see? Things like hidden bunkers, troop movements, mm -hmm. stuff you couldn't know normally. So did it work? Could these remote viewers actually see those things? The results were fascinating, even a skeptical psychology professor who analyzed the data. What did he say? He said there was definitely evidence for something beyond chance, something real was going on. Wow, that's incredible. It suggests maybe we do have this ability to perceive beyond our physical senses. That's mind-blowing. But what about something a bit more, you know, every day? Like, can we sense what other people are thinking? Telepathy and all that. Ah, the classic mind-to-mind -mind connection. Researchers have been studying this for ages using something called the Gansfeld experiment. Gansfeld, what is that? It's like a way to create sensory deprivation. How so? The person wears headphones with white noise and stares at a red light, minimizing distractions. Okay. And then someone else tries to send them a specific image, just mentally. So they're trying to transmit a thought directly from one mind to another. Exactly. And tons of these experiments have been done, and the hit rates are consistently higher than chance would allow. Interesting. So maybe there is some kind of connection between minds that we don't fully understand. That's what the research suggests. Okay, but what about sensing the future? Is that even remotely possible? That's where things get really wild. Researchers have been looking into precognition, and the findings are fascinating, even if they're controversial. I'm all ears. Okay, picture this. You're hooked up to sensors, measuring things like your heart rate. All right. And you're shown random images, some calming, some exciting, all mixed up. Okay. What if I told you your body starts reacting to the intense images a few seconds before they appear on the screen? Wait, are you serious? Like, our bodies are getting a sneak peek of the future. It's like that. Like, we're somehow tapping into information that hasn't happened yet. How is that even possible? That's the big question. But there have been meta-analyses of these studies. And what did they find? A small but statistically significant effect. Which means there might be something to this precognition idea. So we might be getting cues from the future even if we don't realize it. And this trip into the unknown gets even weirder with something called xenoglossy. Xenoglossy. Sounds like something from Star Trek. It's the phenomenon of speaking languages you've never learned. Wait, you mean like suddenly being fluent in Mandarin without ever studying it? There are a lot of documented cases throughout history, some going way back. Really? Of course, they're often anecdotal, hard to verify. Yeah. But some have been carefully investigated, like the case of... Indriedason. Who is that? He was an Icelandic medium who seemed to speak multiple languages he couldn't have known. That's crazy. What if there's some kind of knowledge or skill we can access that goes beyond how we normally learn? It really challenges how we think about the brain. <laughs> and here's another interesting thing. What's that? These non-local experiences aren't as rare as you'd think. So it's not just a few people reporting weird stuff. Nope. Studies show they're actually pretty common. Oh, common. Depending on who's being surveyed, mm. anywhere from 10% to 97% of people say they've had at least one experience hinting at non-local consciousness. 97%? That's almost everyone. So maybe we all have this hidden potential just waiting to be tapped into. Possibly. And then there's one last phenomenon that's truly profound. What's that? It's called terminal lucidity. Okay, I'm intrigued. It's when people with severe dementia who've been mentally absent for a long time yeah. suddenly experience a surge of clarity right before they die. Really? They recognize loved ones, have conversations. It's like their old selves are back even though their brain shouldn't be able to do that. That's both amazing and really mysterious. It's like their consciousness is going beyond their failing brains. Exactly. There are even studies where doctors are watching and documenting these shifts as they happen. Wow, so we have all of these fascinating pieces of the puzzle, remote viewing, telepathy, precognition, xenoglossy, how widespread these experiences are, and this mystery of terminal lucidity. Quite a list. And they all seem to suggest that consciousness is so much more than just a byproduct of our brains. It's like we're standing at the edge of a vast, unexplored territory, and these phenomena are glimpses into what might be out there. This is seriously making me rethink everything I thought I knew about the world. It's a big shift in perspective. It is, but this is all pretty controversial, right? What do skeptics say about this? Well, they often argue that these phenomena are impossible. You know, because? Because they violate the laws of physics. They say the research must be flawed or people are misinterpreting what they experience. Hmm. I can see how 
that'd be a tough pill to swallow. Yeah, and there have been some cases of fraud or bad studies in the past, but not all of it can be dismissed so easily. Why not? A lot of these experiments have been repeated many times in different labs with strong controls, and the results still show something real is going on. So it's not just wishful thinking or bad science. Right. There's something here that needs to be taken seriously, even if it challenges our current understanding. I guess it's like that quote by Max Planck. A new scientific truth doesn't triumph by convincing its opponents, but because its opponents eventually die, a new generation grows up familiar with it. It takes time for big ideas to be accepted, especially ones that challenge the status quo. Exactly. Throughout history, ideas that were once considered radical eventually became mainstream knowledge. Like what? Well, think about black holes, for example. Ah, uh, yes. When Einstein first talked about general relativity, the idea of black holes was so out there that even he didn't believe they could exist. He did have his doubts. And it took decades of research and technology to prove they were real. And now we even have pictures of them. It's amazing to think about. It is. So maybe we're at a similar point with non-local consciousness, you know? How so? Like we're just starting to explore this huge unknown area and who knows what amazing discoveries are waiting for us. That's the exciting part, isn't it? It really is. It's like we've been given this huge cosmic jigsaw puzzle mm. and we're just starting to put the edges together. And we're getting these glimpses of an incredible picture, but there's still so many missing pieces. Exactly. And that's what makes this whole thing so exciting. We're at the frontier of science, exploring something that could totally change how we see ourselves in the universe. So where do we go from here? How do we go from cool stories and interesting theories to a real solid understanding of non-local consciousness? Well, one thing we need is better theories, theories that make predictions we can actually test. So it's not enough to just say, hey, maybe consciousness is everywhere. We need ideas that can be scientifically proven or disproven. Right. Specific questions, carefully designed experiments, collecting data, and then seeing if that data backs up our ideas. The classic scientific method applied to this super complex and mysterious thing. And this is where those physicalist theories we talked about earlier might come in handy, right? Absolutely. They might not explain everything about consciousness, but they give us clues about how the brain works which could be relevant to figuring out how non-local awareness might work. Exactly. It's not about throwing out what we know about neuroscience. It's about fitting those pieces into this larger picture. Like building a bridge between the world of science and this new world of non-local consciousness. That's a great analogy. And to build that bridge, we need everyone working together. Researchers from different fields, you mean? Yeah, physicists, neuroscientists, psychologists, philosophers, everyone bringing their own expertise. Sharing knowledge, challenging each other's assumptions, being open to new ideas. And doing good ethical research, knowing that what they're finding could be really powerful. It's like we're all explorers setting off on a grand adventure, but the map is still being made as we go. A bit daunting, but so exciting. Imagine if we could really understand and use non-local consciousness. The possibilities are mind-blowing. Right. We could revolutionize communication, healing, education, maybe even solve some of the world's biggest problems. Think about it. Instantly sharing knowledge and experiences, tapping into some kind of collective wisdom. It's a fascinating idea. But for now, we need to focus on the science, keep asking questions, improving our methods, and being patient. It's like we're at the beginning of a new scientific revolution, changing how we see ourselves in the universe. And it's a revolution you're a part of, you know? That's right. Everyone listening, by engaging with these ideas, asking questions, staying curious. You're contributing to this exploration of human consciousness. So what do you think so far? What's been the most interesting part for you? For me, it's how open-ended it all is. There's no one right answer. It's about each of us figuring things out based on our own experiences. I agree. That's what makes this so fascinating. Exactly. And maybe one day we'll look back and see this as a turning point when humanity started to wake up to its full potential. It's a powerful thought. It is. Well, we've covered a lot today, really mind-bending stuff, but I'm feeling like there's more to explore, isn't there? You're right. There's one more crucial aspect the paper brings up, not just understanding non-local consciousness, but using that knowledge ethically. Right. This isn't just a theoretical debate. If these abilities are real and we learn to control them, there are serious consequences to consider. So we're talking ethics now. <laughs> the ethics of non-local consciousness. Yeah. This isn't just some philosophical debate anymore, right? If these abilities are as powerful as they seem. 
if they're real, then we got to be careful about the downsides. Right. Absolutely. We can't get caught up in utopian dreams or dystopian fears. Got to stay balanced. Right. Balance. Think about it. If someone used remote viewing to spy on people. Oh, yeah. Or get secret info without permission, that'd be a huge ethical problem. It's like we're so used to the limits of our physical senses that we don't even know how to deal with abilities that go beyond that. That's the challenge we're facing. Mm. The government remote viewing program, they took this seriously. I bet. They had strict rules to make sure the information wasn't misused. Makes sense. But what if these abilities become more common? What's stopping someone from using them for bad? It's a scary thought. Right. It's like opening Pandora's box. We can't just unleash these abilities without thinking about the consequences. Both good and bad. Exactly. We need to talk about this openly and honestly. Who needs to be part of that conversation? Scientists, researchers for sure, but also ethicists, policymakers, regular people, everyone. This is where it gets tricky, right? We're not just talking about regulating some new technology. We're talking about regulating parts of human consciousness itself. And that brings up so many questions. Like what? Like, do we have the right to limit someone's access to their own consciousness? Where do we draw the line between personal freedom and protecting others from potential harm? Those are tough questions and ones we've struggled with for a long time. Yeah, but now they're even more urgent with these new possibilities. It's like we're entering a new phase of being human where we have to figure out how to handle this expanded consciousness responsibly. We need to be thinking ahead, anticipating problems, putting safeguards in place. So if these abilities can be developed, they're used for good, not for harm. This feels like such a turning point for humanity if we can navigate this ethical minefield. The possibilities are incredible. Seriously, it's mind-blowing to think about. Imagine communicating on a deeper, more empathetic level, accessing a vast pool of knowledge and wisdom, healing ourselves and others with our minds. It sounds like science fiction, but who knows? Maybe it's closer than we think. Maybe. But we have to be smart about it every step of the way. Couldn't agree more. So as we wrap up this deep dive into non-local consciousness, what's the most important thing for our listeners to remember? Stay curious. Don't be afraid to question what you think you know. Explore new ideas. Imagine what might be possible. The potential of human consciousness is enormous, and we've barely scratched the surface. It's a journey we're all on together. And by staying curious, having these conversations, supporting ethical research. We can all help unlock that potential. Exactly. We've covered a lot of ground today. From crazy theories to real-world evidence to the ethical questions we need to answer. It's been quite a ride. Yeah, it has. But I want to leave you with one last thought. Go for it. If consciousness is truly fundamental, if it's woven into the fabric of the universe and connects us all in ways we're just starting to grasp, yeah. then how does that change how we see each other, the world, even the cosmos itself? Wow, that's a big question and one I think we should all be thinking about. Keep exploring. Keep learning. Absolutely. Thanks for joining us on this incredible deep dive. And until next time, keep those minds open and those questions coming.